Hey out everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee, if you're new here, welcome. So great to have you. Uh, today I'm doing a sit down video. I haven't done one of these in a while. And I think this is the first time that I've done kind of a favorites video. So we will see how this goes. I'm gonna talk about books. I'm gonna talk about what I've been listening to and loving this year. What I've been eating and loving this year, all kinds of stuff. So if you are at all interested in that, stick around. Um, this is also a very exciting video for me today because it is sponsored by the lovely people at Anna Luisa uh, Jewelry. They kindly reached out and asked if I would like to work with them and I love my jewelry so of course I said yes. Um, I'll show you what I'm wearing today. So first I have this uh, Cody ring which is like a tiny cute little signet that um, sadly I resized my, I sized my fingers wrong and it's a little bit too big but perks of having a boyfriend who is a jewelry designer and knows about that kind of stuff he's going to resize it for me so it's going to be okay. I'm going to be able to wear it and not fear that it's going to fall off. But I think it is just super cute as like a dainty kind of ring for your pinky. I've been wanting a pinky signet ring for a long time. So when I saw this, I thought that's definitely a bit of me. Um, next, I have the um, inner just like small chain, which is I believe like herringbone. I think it's just super, super sleek, super, yeah, chic, and you can kind of layer it with other pieces as well. I just wear it with this gold chain that I have had for years, um, and I think it looks super cute together. It can be dressed up, you can wear it with a casual t-shirt like what I'm wearing today. And then next I have uh, the double hoop scarlet earrings which are these just little double hooped uh, earrings here which I, I thought I wanted something that had the look of like multiple kind of earrings for that kind of constellation curated ear look and these were perfect for that um, again another piece that is just like super wearable every day uh, but also can be dressed up looks great with other simple pieces as well so yeah that is the sponsor of this video today so thank you so much to Anna Louisa for wanting to work with me it's very exciting they are having a really massive sale at the moment they have 10% off a lot of their stuff but then they also have up to 60% off uh, a lot of their last kind of chance items so if you're watching this and you need something for New Year's or you just want to treat yourself with your Christmas money that you've got, I would highly recommend checking out Anna Louisa. I have a, a link down below that if you're interested, um, I would love it if you clicked it and treat yourself to something nice because I said so. So yeah, thank you again to Anna Louisa for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. So firstly we are going to talk about books because that's why we're all here. Um, I'm going to rattle off some of my favourite books of the year. It's a little bit preemptive for me. I don't quite like to make these kinds of hard and fast decisions before the year is over but I'm pretty confident in the books that I have decided to include in this video. Um, so I'm just going to go from books the first book from like the beginning of the year down so first book that I want to include in this is Flashman is in Trouble by Taffy Brodessa Acne. I read this as a buddy read with Jessica from uh, Jessica's book stack on Instagram it was kind of like the book that solidified our uh, friendship I would say. We had a really good time with it, we uh, read it and then we jumped on Zoom and we filmed it and that was the start of our boozy book chat. If you haven't watched our latest one where we read Gilead I do recommend you go do that. 
otherwise you can go watch the very first boozy book chat where we read uh, where we read Flashman and is in trouble and let me know what you think. The reason why I love this book so much was because of the subversive style of narration and um, I guess the way that it set itself up to be this story but as you kind of go through you slowly begin to realize that that's not quite how it all seems. Uh, if you don't know what this book is about, uh, Flashman is in Trouble centers a character named Toby Flashman. He is going through a divorce from his wife. Uh, they have two children. They live in uh, Manhattan in New York City. Toby is a doctor and his wife owns a like talent agency very kind of keeping up with the Joneses they uh, are all about kind of um, their position and their close group of friends and how um, that reflects on them. Toby is kind of venturing out into the world of online dating he is having a lot of sex with a lot of random women and it's kind of uncomfortable to read he is coming across as a bit of a fuckboy in some parts uh, but what I liked about this book is the way that it was narrated the story is told from the perspective of one of his old high school friends who is a woman I cannot remember her name um, I can't remember but she is retelling the story after these moments where Toby has shared uh, what is happening in his divorce what's happening with the kids all that kind of stuff and she's kind of using it as material to write what we soon discover is her own book about it um, I thought that the whole idea that this book appears to be about this kind of sad 40-something uh, year old man who is trying to make it in the dating game um, and that it appears that way but slowly you kind of see the shift away from Toby and more towards his friend who's narrating the story and I guess how she is using it as a using history as a vessel for her own success um i thought it was really good i know a lot of people don't often talk about this book um excuse me with a lot of um praise but i really loved it i thought that it was fun and super easy to read and not something that you can get um too kind of bogged down in also there is a tv show coming out about it so not a tv show a movie and I think it is starring Lizzie Kaplan is playing the friend and Jesse Eisenberg is playing Toby Fleischman so it's gonna be a good one to see once it's been adapted I'm excited the next book that I read uh, that was a favorite for the year was Motherhood by Sheila Hedy uh, this was another book that Jessica and I read together, although we didn't film a boozy book chat for this one, we kind of like ran out of time and now it's been so long that we probably wouldn't be able to have a good discussion about it because I would need to reread it again. But what I can remember is that I really freaking love this book so much. It was exactly what I needed to read as someone who has decided that they don't want to have children and it was super validating for me in that decision that I've made but also I just found the act of reading something that felt um, just so thoughtful around everything to do with what it means to be a mother what it means to choose not to become a mother um, how that is with a uh, career and what what we have to sacrifice as women in order to become 
these things that live for other people. It was just, yeah, it really kind of addressed a lot of the feelings and I guess anxieties that I have had in the past about whether or not this is a decision that I truly can be settled on and I think the answer that I got from this book was that it's going to be a constant it's never going to be just uh you've made the decision and that it is what it is like I think it, it allowed me to kind of um be okay with kind of rehashing and going over it or coming back to it and continually kind of grappling with the question of motherhood. The book is about an unnamed narrator who is a writer, obviously a big theme um, in these books so far. She is grappling with the idea of whether or not she wants to become a mother and it's really this kind of like taking it, looking at it, examining it from every which way she possibly can think of in just such beautiful and exact ways that really felt um, super relatable. I highly, highly, highly recommend anyone who is interested in themes of motherhood to read this. It's such a good book. Um, okay, next I read Blueberries by Alana Savage. Um, this is a book that was brought to my attention by the lovely Rebecca Eats Books and many other people on Instagram. I had heard so many good things and thought it was about time that I read it. And I was not disappointed. Uh, it's a collection of essays written by Alana Savage, who is a young Australian writer and journalist. Um, these essays, this collection of essays, deal with so many things. The idea of what it means to exist in your body, how, um, how you interact with others, and the different parts of society that you exist in, academia, um, suburbia, what else? Just in your body, just in general. Um, I thought it was a really beautiful, a, be a beautiful ode to a person's existence, just done in really interesting ways. A lot of the essays played around with um, different forms and the way that they were structured and a lot of them kind of delivered things that I just wasn't expecting and I was really blown away and really affected by it as well. Like it's still something that I think about today and it's definitely up there as probably my favourite read of the year. No shade to any of these books that I'm about to mention but Blueberries uh, it did the most for me in terms of the books that I read this year um, and it was just perfect it was just exactly what it what it was is what it needed to be and I'm just so happy that I've read it now the next book that I read uh, in 2021 that is a sure fave was Ties by Domenico Stanone I have talked about this book extensively. I have a reading blog where I talk about how much I loved it and also I talk about it in my November reading wrap up because that's when I read it. I think I can probably safely say that San Jose is a favourite new writer of mine. So how many books do you need to read in order to call a writer a fave? I don't know but two feels like enough to me. This book is about the the fracture of a marriage, uh, it looks at ways in which that can come about but also what it does to uh, that relationship and the family in a wider sense. It is told in three parts. The first part is written from the wife's perspective as um, her husband is leaving her, she is completely unraveling. Uh, the second part is told from the perspective of the husband. Um, sometime in the future 
when they are much older I think it's like 50 years on we see that they are together and so you immediately start to wonder what has happened in this relationship in order for them to reconcile uh, after what felt like uh, a point of no return when you're hearing the wife's experience the and then the final third part of the story is told from the perspectives of his children it has a really interesting great ending that I would say I did not see coming I'm not like a super plotty or like um, plot twist type of person but it did some really fun things and I will definitely be wanting to reread this one in 2022 uh, I recommend this book to everyone please go read Right, the next favourite book of 2021 uh, has to be The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lyspector. Truly an uh, unreal book, the, unlike anything I've ever read before. So weird, but brilliant. Uh, when I think about this book, I think about storytelling, uh, unreliable narrators, just how vivid a fictional character can be and the way that a writer can almost create magic out of that. It's a really hard one to explain because it's about many things and it's only very small so it definitely packs so much into it and you get so much out of it. I would say it's not an easy read like it was quite difficult for me to wrap my head around exactly what was going on I would recommend reading the introduction if um, you are going to read it that really helped me just have a better understanding of uh, what I was going into and how to kind of uh, approach it if you want to read something that is completely unexpected um, and kind of takes you completely in and out of this really vibrant world that it's created in such a small number of pages read this book okay and the final favorite book of 2021 goes to my brilliant friend by Alina Ferrante um, I also did a reading vlog on this I did two reading vlogs on this book actually and uh, it was it was a great time. I read this book with Sophie from Gold Nail Books on Instagram. We have committed ourselves to reading the entire quartet together. We loved the first one so much. Um, we're both hanging out to read Story of a New Name. So that's going to be the first book I read in 2022. I've decided. Um, what else can I say about this book? I mean, I did two reading vlogs on it so there's definitely lots of thoughts and feelings about it but I think to kind of sum it up for me this book feels like a very exciting introduction into a world that I just cannot wait to get back into um, it's super gossipy and brutal and not in the ways that you expect I feel like there were times where I was anticipating things to happen and they didn't come or maybe they did but in much more kind of su subtle ways that weren't so like gut punching but when you add them all up it's kind of like just super bleak and I'm getting ahead of myself what this book is about this book is about Alana and Leela who are two young girls growing up in a very poor part of Naples this is the story of their friendship. It's very much a character study of these two women. It's told from the perspective of Elena, their, her relationship with Leela and what that is like. Leela is a very kind of um, intelligent and smart person, but she also has this very kind of vindictive and uh, mean side to her that comes out a lot in her friendship towards Eleanor. Eleanor is also very intelligent but it's much more of a practice thing. She uh, works hard to 
get good grades in school and to kind of allow something, uh, to have a way for her to kind of get out of this very poor neighborhood. And um, she's not often kind of like uh, praised for this, so her character is very much overlooked a lot by uh, her family, by Leela, and yeah, the dynamic in the story between them is just so intense and so well written and I just cannot wait for more of the Neapolitan Quartet. Talking about those books has got me so jacked up, like I'm so excited. I don't have any more books to talk about, so I thought it would be fun to quickly like she has some other favorite things that I've been enjoying in 2021. Um, we're going to start with listening. So according to my Spotify wrap up, my number one artist in 2021 was Donna Summer. I love Donna Summer. I would definitely say she's kind of felt like the theme of this year. Mostly me just trying to... Um, dance away any kind of anxiety that I've been having. Anytime I want to lift my mood, I just play Donna Summer. Specifically the album Bad Girls, which I have on vinyl, and yeah, can do no wrong really. Okay, food. I've been, um, as you know, really into Yorkshire tea. It's definitely been another thing that has got me through 2021. Uh... I like to take my Yorkshire tea with milk. I like a nice tan colour. If I ever come around to your house, please know that I won't accept anything other than that. The other thing that I've really been enjoying is, and I've been eating it so much lately, is this curry from a Korean place on Uber Eats. This is Auckland specific. Sorry to anyone that's watching this that doesn't know what I'm talking about, but it is so good. Okay, so the restaurant is called Bon Na Gi Restaurant, Korean restaurant, and you want to get the Korean style curry rice. And I get it with pork because I haven't tried it with anything else, but it is so good. It's like a smoky, if you've ever had like a Japanese curry, it's like that, but a lot smokier and not as sweet. I've had it like probably four times this month. It's so good. Okay, and the last we um, shares for 2021. So favorite things of 2021 that I've been watching include HBO's Insecure. It's the final season. What's going to happen? Who is Issa going to end up with? I'm Team Lawrence anyone else watch Insecure. It's so funny. I mean, I know everyone was talking about Succession and I love that show too, but I feel like this show doesn't get talked about enough. It's so funny. Love all the characters. A show has never made me laugh out loud as much as this one do does, so I would highly recommend you go watch it. It's great. Um, and then let me know who you want Issa to end up with. Okay, and then finally, I just want to reel off some YouTubers that I've been really loving and enjoying this year. Um, this is obviously my first New Year Christmas time in this space, and it has been super fun um, connecting with other people who make content that I really love. I'm sure all of you are already probably following them if you're following me and seeing this, but in case anyone isn't, I really, really do recommend that you go check these guys out because I love their content and I get so excited when I see them upload because I just get excited. Okay, the first one that I wanted to mention was Hannah May. She is a bookstagrammer, but she also... Um, talks a lot about what it's like to live with uh, a disability or chronic illness um, and she makes really amazing uh, vlogs and also uh, in her sit down videos where she talks about books. I just love watching her share parts of her life on the internet and also 
um, make me more aware of what it is like for people living with a disability or suffering with chronic illness and uh, has been very uh, informative towards to me. Um, the next person that I wanted to mention was Literary Iggy. She is a, a bookseller who creates YouTube videos and she shares a lot of that in a lot of her vlogs so you get to see her kind of um, at work and see what new titles are coming in. She reads a lot of interesting and I would say different um, books to me. Again she's someone that t talks about them in such a way that is very impassioned and makes me want to pick them up. She's also just like so sweet and so lovely and um, I really enjoy seeing her face on the internet when she posts new videos. The last person that I wanted to mention and my favourite 2021 YouTubers for the year was Simon Savage. He's been such a delight to interact with online. Um, he puts out so much content and it's all so great. He is someone who is super on the pulse with new releases and what's coming out next year so it's been really good to kind of follow along and gain that kind of information and access as to what I might want to be on the lookout for 2022. Um, I've been loving his vlogmas content because it feels very not cozy Christmassy here and it's just been fun to kind of watch him doing his daily uh, festive errands and putting up Christmas trees and watching him organize his books like I love all that kind of stuff so I would definitely recommend go checking going and checking him out if you haven't already I'm sure you already are but if you're not please do that um, and tell him I sent you because wouldn't that be wild okay that's me for 2021 we're all wrapped up for the year uh, let me know if you've read any of those books that I mentioned, uh, what, how you felt about them, what was your favourite reads of 2021, anything else you also have been loving or enjoying in 2021. Just general like comments, questions, honestly I love, have, I have been loving the interaction with people on YouTube in these last couple of months so I want more of it. Please. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Kakite!